Michelle Bachman is in studio with me for two weeks. We've been talking about the issues of the day. We're wrapping it up here now in the next few minutes. And Michelle, before we move to the uh, experience you had in Israel, we need to talk a little bit about the hotline and how it's going to be affecting churches and how it could possibly result in some lawsuits. Explain what's on your mind, please. We've seen jihad through the court systems Mm -hmm. all across Europe. Now it's coming to the United States as well in San Francisco and Tennessee and Minneapolis, perhaps even in your community. What we're seeing is that hotlines are being set up by units of government for the purpose of encouraging people to call in and rat on their fellow man to report a hate crime. So of course, government is deciding what a hate crime is and what hate speech will be. Here in the city of Minneapolis last fall, they passed a resolution that condemns violence and hate speech against Muslims, not against Jews, Hmm. not against Christians, not against Buddhists, only against Muslims. Everything is about, quote, this fake Islamophobia. Now, if you look at terrorism across the United States, it has been those who subscribe to Islamic Sharia law who are committing terrorism against anybody who's considered non-Muslim. You haven't seen non-Muslims out in the streets stabbing Muslims. There hasn't been this big wave of Islamophobia, but they're pretending that there's a big wave of Islamophobia. But really, all this is, is the city of Minneapolis, like San Francisco, like like Memphis, Tennessee, what they're trying to do is implement anti-blasphemy laws. They're trying to implement Islamic Sharia law locally in order to quiet churches and quiet anybody who would talk about what the truth is about Islam. And instead, they name call. You're a white supremacist. You're an Islamophobe. You're a xenophobe. This is what they do. But in this article published in our local newspaper, they say, we've got this hotline open. It's fully staffed with live people. And it's seven days a week, 12 hours a day, including on the week and they have hours. Then they say, if you live out state, they give you another phone number. Then they say, here's the phone number for the Department of Justice. Let's Mm -hmm. get the FBI involved. So they're serious about this because what they want is civilization jihad. They want jihad through the court systems to silence speech because when you take Mm -hmm. away someone's speech rights to speak out like we're doing right now to tell the truth about something, then it's game over. It's game over. They win because when people have no idea what's going on, We can't share the information about this threat, and we have to understand the threat. When we can't do that, they win, we lose. Mm -hmm. And that's why this is so extremely important that we're putting this information out, because there should be a lawsuit filed against the city of Minneapolis Mm -hmm. for doing this. They have violated the so-called separation of church and state that the left is so in love with because they're preferring Islam over any other religion. And number two, they're fascists. Mm -hmm. That's what they are. They're fascists. They want to shut down your right to free speech. You have a First Amendment guaranteed right to free speech. And in Minneapolis, if you're trying to tell the truth about Islam, that's now considered hate speech. To such an effect, they want you to call the Justice Department, which could mean jail. So these people are serious. Don't think they aren't. They've done it before in France, and they've been very successful in Canada. You told me the story of a fellow from Nigeria who immigrated to Canada. He owned an apartment, Mm -hmm. and he tried to rent out the apartment that was currently occupied by Muslims. They wouldn't let him come in and show the apartment to anybody else. So he went in when they were gone and showed the apartment, and he was sued and for $12,000 because he forgot to take his shoes off. When he showed the apartment, and so the Muslim couple said, you're disrespecting our religion because you didn't take your shoes off. And the Human Rights Council in Canada agreed with the Muslims, and now this guy from Nigeria owes $12,000 to these Muslims. This is reality. That's jihad by court, and it's coming to the United States now here in Minneapolis, in San Francisco, in Tennessee, and it might be in your community. I haven't read your local newspaper. This is what we're dealing with.